Just in time for the new school year, a brand new medical training lab set to open at a Milwaukee high school. Some Wisconsin lawmakers want to toughen the state's drunk driving laws, and they want to do it with ignition interlock devices. Floodgates at Estabrook Dam have been open for years, even after the DNR said repair it or tear it down. The Milwaukee County Board wants to repair the dam, but opponents say the cost is just too high. Duran and Barr is celebrating 50 years of espionage, mystery, and intrigue. Okay. You use a phrase as ghetto, though. Do you not alienate the law-abiding citizens who say, hey, call it a neighborhood? So if some money dropped out of the sky, you wouldn't use it for extra officers on the street? I have to ask you, how many times do people come up to you and go, suddenly I see? All the time. And I'm fine with that. It didn't take long for football to return to the Wisconsin school named after Coach Vince Lombardi. Earlier this week, we told you the story of how the small Green Bay school would have no football season this coming year because the district couldn't find a coach. Judge Neil Gorsuch has six weeks to prepare for his confirmation hearings to become the next Supreme Court justice, and he's already making progress to some. And it's been floated that you would be an excellent pick for Donald Trump's running mate. What say you? And you likened it to police going in and actually grabbing people out of their homes or out of their workplace. Do you really think that's what the executive order means? Now, a CBS 58 News exclusive. For the first time in years, the U.S. Army is offering two-year enlistments and $40,000 bonuses for those who enlist for at least four years. I spoke with Brigadier General Jason Walrath just moments ago, who's in town talking about the call to serve being both patriotic and practical. CBS 58 is following breaking news. A person has been shot and wounded outside of the Journal Sentinels building in downtown Milwaukee. Let's take a live look from the scene near 3rd and State. Milwaukee police have confirmed one person is injured. I have a source that is telling me that the shots were fired from a blue car with tinted windows. Again, that is one source near the investigation. Hey, it's not just because it's Monday that you felt like you were waking up in a fog this morning. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I couldn't find my ice scraper. Yeah, because that is moisture settling on surfaces, a little yeah. bit of frost. So because I had to break out the spatula. Yeah, you know what? Um, I have that uh, scraper in my car year round. So you just, you never know here in Wisconsin, right? And I don't cook, so the spatula needed a workout. Uh, <laughs> there you go. You don't want to have extra stuff laying around the house with no use, right? The main task at hand is registering people for September's Race for the Cure and starting the fundraising now. The turnout overwhelming and certainly gratifying for the organizers. Whitney and Mike, after we heard from so many witnesses, now we here at CBS 58 News can let the viewers see exactly what happened. We're celebrating another turkey donation here. Here's the lucky bobblehead recipient. Hello, sir. What's your name? Where are you from? Well, you know, swearing has long been considered impolite, but a new two-part study has revealed another characteristic that goes along with cursing. <laughs> Honesty. Medical Daily reporting that people who curse to express themselves also tell the truth more often and are more truthful about themselves. I believe it. Uh, the research involved about 300 people, thousands of Facebook users. The use of taboo phrases also linked to overall verbal fluency. Because you know what, Mike? Sometimes you got to say. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I wonder if I Better. swore during some of the like the really bad weather events, if I would be more believable then. <laughs> I can try. I'll have to run that yeah. by the oh, Just stay in your best behavior and join the news at 5. I know what the calendar says, but it sure doesn't feel like August. Thank you, everyone, for joining us at noon. Mike Stralo is off on this Friday. I'm Shum McCormack. Ready weather warned us this would happen. Meteorologist Chris Nelson in for Rebecca today with what could turn out to be the coldest <laughs> day of summer. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, after a rainy opening day, the 2017 edition of the Wisconsin State Fair is entering its first weekend on a chilly note. Like that's going to stop anyone. It sure didn't stop CBS 58's Julie Parisi, who joins us now live. Julie, here's a look at tonight's musical lineup on the main stage. John Mellencamp headlines with Carlene Carter starting at 8 tonight. New at noon, Milwaukee police want you to be on the lookout for a car that was involved in a hit and run that injured a Milwaukee motorcycle officer. The picture on the left is from a surveillance camera which captured the suspect vehicle, a Mazda CX-5, with license plate number 511RNY. We'll be posting that on our web as well so you can get a closer look. This crash happened yesterday near 27th and Clybourne. Two motorcycle officers pulled out of a nearby parking lot to pull over a car, and that's when the driver of that Mazda slammed into the back of one of the motorcycles before speeding off. 
anyone with information about the whereabouts of the Mazda or any information on the case for that matter is asked to please call Milwaukee Police at 414-935-7360. Prayers have begun in memory of an event that rocked our community five years ago. We're hiding. Okay, we do have officers attempting to locate the, the shooter. Okay, we have officers there. On August 5th, 2012, a Cudahy man walked into the Sikh temple of Oak Creek and opened fire. He would kill six, including brave members who put themselves in harm's way to protect women and children who hid in a food storage closet. The gunman brought down by the heroics of Lieutenant Brian Murphy, who took 15 gunshots that day, and his backup, Sam Linda. The FBI would conclude that the shooter acted alone and was not directed by any white supremacist group, even though he had well-documented associations. CBS 58's Brendan Cullerton is live in Oak Creek, where a weekend full of memorials and community activities have started. Brendan. Brendan, thank you. One woman and five men were murdered that day. A mother, a priest, a church leader, and a farmer just looking for a new opportunity. Four were Indian nationals. The remaining were Americans. All had contributed both spiritually and creatively to our community. Pardeep Kalika, whose father died fighting the gunman, will join us live today on the CBS 58 News at 4, along with survivor Mandeep Kerr. It will be a time of tribute, but also a time to talk about the various community events, uplifting events that are coming up as we stop to remember and continue to heal. Please join us. So Foxconn is coming to Wisconsin, but will all those jobs go to Wisconsinites? Concerned are you that local candidates are not ready don't have the proper job skills to take those Foxconn jobs. Very concerned. I mean, it's, it keeps me up at night. Yeah, that's Earl Buford from Employ Milwaukee. He says it is crucial for job seekers to register with the program now. It works in conjunction with other workforce boards in several local counties and helps an estimated 20,000 people a year with job training or placement. Now, demand is expected to double between construction jobs and also jobs within the high-tech plant that most likely will be in Kenosha or Racine counties, and he doesn't expect any conflict with a newly formed consortium with other Midwestern cities. You no, know, my first priority is getting Milwaukee and Wisconsin residents into those jobs first. That's priority number one. Um, if there was to be a, a situation where folks want to come to Wisconsin, and move to Wisconsin and pay taxes in Wisconsin, uh, we, we have that, that consortium in place so we can kind of process that. Now to get started with Employ Milwaukee, you should call 414-270-1700. Coming up at four, the three locations where you can also get tapped into resources for the Foxconn and Milwaukee Bucks Arena projects. A 10 hour public hearing on incentives to bring Foxconn to Wisconsin ended late last night in Madison. Questions were raised about the potential impacts because of the rich tax incentives being offered, how the roads will hold up, and possible impact on the environment if Foxconn is allowed to bypass permits for dealing with dredged materials in wetlands. We still believe that um, the, per the project can go forward uh, expeditiously and that we can still have the regulatory frame framework in place to make sure that the environment is protected. Meantime, there is already pushback on the deal from one major conservative group. Americans for Prosperity says, as free market activists who staunchly oppose tax incentives, we cannot support the expensive refundable tax credits in this package. MPS is making sure your kids are healthy and ready to start the school year. The more children that we reach, the better their attendance is going to be at school, the better their health outcomes are going to be. Families gathered at North Division High School for one-stop shopping provided by the Milwaukee Health Department, along with several community agencies and businesses who made it possible to offer checkups, immunizations, and backpacks full of supplies, and all at no charge. So it takes a concerted effort. We need all of these organizations under our tent to reach our children where they are. There were complimentary haircuts and displays about healthy lifestyle choices. This goes on until 3 this afternoon, again at North Division High School. Then look for another back-to-school health fair at Hayes Bilingual School on Milwaukee's south side on August 11th. And as students prepare to go back to school, a new warning about a disturbing online trend. Online videos featuring popular kids' characters, such as Elsa from the Disney movie Frozen and Spider-Man, participating in some very inappropriate activities. CBS 58's Christine Flores speaks with concerned parents and shows you how to ensure your kids don't see something harmful. Watch for her special report tonight only on the CBS 58 News at 10.
And coming up on the CBS 58 News at noon, the president responds to reports of a grand jury now looking into his campaign's ties with Russia. And the Ford Motor Company weighs a massive recall that could impact police departments around the country.